grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. Welcome to our service this morning and also welcome to those who will be participating this afternoon at home. The theme for the service might be the word discipleship, but certainly that's what I'll be preaching on. And it's nice that Helen is now going to induct some disciples, commission them as lay pastoral assistants. So I'll hand over to Helen. Thank you ever so much. Well, first of all, please be seated. Uh, secondly, much as I would love to be giving the LPA's certificates, it is actually licenses I'm giving you. It's your renewal of licenses, which commissions you to serve for another three years. So, uh, which, is a, which is a very discipleship ministry time, isn't it, if you think about Jesus supposedly having three years of ministry. Um, may I invite our amazing LPA's to come up, please. Fantastic. Um, Lyndon has already said a few words about these people, um, and most of you will know who they are. Some of you will not. Some of you have joined our church quite recently, and these may be um, faces you're getting to know, albeit you have to learn to recognize them by their hair and their eyes at the moment because of the mask wearing. Um, LPAs, as Lyndon said, stands for Lay Pastoral Assistants. Now, we're all called to do pastoral work in the sense that we love and care for one another in the church. But these people uh, work very closely with the clergy in this church to help deliver the pastoral care. When we went into lockdown in March 2020, it was these people I was very quickly um, in contact with for us to ensure between us we were in telephone contact with everybody because we had suddenly been cut off. So during this period, you might have been having a phone call from one of these good people. I, I should say there is also Barbara, who is unable to be with us today because of illness, but um, we will not forget her. We will recommission her at some point, probably when, and I'm going to embarrass you, Jenny, would you just stand up a moment? So we can't recommission Jenny yet, because Jenny is not yet commissioned as an LPA, but she's currently doing the training and she's going to become one of our LPAs, which is wonderful. Thank you, Jenny. So perhaps when we're ready to, to recognize the start of your ministry, we'll be able to say this prayer for Barbara as well. These are amazing people. They, um, and they're people that are good for you to get to know because if you have any pastoral needs, you can come and talk to me. You can also come and talk to them. And uh, between us, um, we will do our best to walk alongside you given the, the, the different needs we all have at different times in this church. So we're going to do the recommissioning and then going to give out the licenses and then I'm going to say a prayer for these wonderful people. Our LPAs are trained and recognised by our diocese as those involved in the work of pastoral care within the parish. They are licensed to carry out this role. They work in close cooperation with the vicar in respect of pastoral needs. I ask you who have followed this vocation to serve through our church here in Broadstone, do you commit yourself to this work and responsibility? Yes. Will you seek to fulfill your responsibilities with generosity and faithfulness? With the help of God, we will. Will you seek to perform this role prayerfully and in a spirit of mutual respect and collaboration with those who lead ministry in this place? With the help of God, we will. Will you share the role of caring for our community with sensitivity and compassion and in so doing follow the example of Jesus who walked the way of a servant? With the help of God, we will. As incumbent, I bless your recommissioning on behalf of our bishops as LPAs. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, may God grant you grace, wisdom and joy as you live out this calling. Amen. Amen. And now the wider church, because you're disciples too. Sisters and brothers, 
Will you support our LPAs in this ministry amongst us? Will you pray for them in this ministry? With the help of God, we will. People of God, Christ invites each of us to faithful discipleship and service. We are all called to different ministries as we seek to live God's love. As we recommission our LPAs today, will you, with them, and as baptised disciples of Christ, renew your commitment to the loving service of God, of one another, and of all people? With the help of God, we will. And so together we pray. We commit to the mission of this church. We will live in ways that show those around us the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ. We will demonstrate by our actions as well as by our words how much God longs for the healing and wholeness of the world. We will build one another up in love so that those who encounter our common life will find in our sharing a foretaste of God's kingdom on earth. Amen. I'm really pleased to be uh, giving you your licenses. Normally this would be happening in the cathedral with the bishop, but COVID strange times continuing means that's why we're doing it here. But I'm gonna come and give out your licenses. And so let's together uh, pray for these good people. Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of one another and the life of St. John's Church, for the welcoming and caring community who we are and who we are growing into to become more Christ-like day by day, week by week, by all our individual discipleship. We pray especially for our LPAs, giving thanks for their vocation, for their love, for their compassion, for their practical ways of serving and the differing ways they serve out their vocation as LPA in the life of this church. Together they form a strong team as the body of Christ through which your spirit flows and anoints and equips to help all who are here feel welcome and loved and not alone. And so we pray for our LPAs. We give thanks for them. We pray that your Holy Spirit may rest upon them and that they may always know the Spirit of God giving them strength, guiding them, and equipping them to do the work that is set before them. Bless them in all that they do and all that they are, that they may be blessings to others. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. As I invite them to take their seats, can the rest of us give them a round of applause? So, my friends, Christ calls us to share in the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. 
that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please sit for the reading? A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did and how they had turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, God alone is my rock and my salvation. salvation. Wait on God alone in stillness, O my soul, for in him is my hope. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my strength and my glory. God is my strong rock. In him is my refuge. God alone is my rock and salvation. 
Put your trust in him always, my people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. The peoples are but a breath. The whole human race are deceit on the scales. They are altogether lighter than air. God alone is my rock and salvation. Put no trust in oppression. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God spoke once, and twice I have heard the same, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to their deeds. God alone is my rock and my salvation. Friends, would you please stand if you're able? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Over the, say, the last five years, or even over the last year, what have you learnt about the Christian faith? How have you grown as a Christian? Two questions. I'd like to leave with you to think about and perhaps think about over Advent. But I want to start with Socrates. You've heard of Socrates, I hope, the Greek philosopher, where there's a story of a man and he was poor and he wanted to become a pupil of Socrates. He went up to Socrates, declared how poor he was and said that he had nothing to give but himself. Socrates, being the wise man he was, replied by saying, do you not see that you are giving me the most precious thing of all? The first of Jesus' disciples were called, chosen to follow him, and they responded by giving themselves to him and his message. Notice it was Jesus who initiated the call, teacher called pupil. In the case of Socrates, however, it was pupil who searched out the teacher. I'd like to reflect for a few moments on my past career as a teacher. I taught the youngest I taught was eight years of age. That was in a primary school. And then I went on to teach in a further education college. And the oldest pupil I taught was 59. In all my years as a teacher, I often went through the motion, what is education really about? And I had quite strong feelings about it, which didn't always coincide with what was the educational view at the time. The important thing for me was that youngsters 
and adults, the important thing about education is that it should give them the skills and the ability to learn and to go on learning all through life. And that will enable them to be adaptable in a world which is constantly changing at a fast rate. Adaptability is a basic human characteristic. I think all the scientists agree with adaptability is one of the major themes of science. Yes, it's a human characteristic, but there are factors in our lives as we get, go on through life, factors which can squash or encourage that adaptability. And I sometimes reflect quite often, how adaptable is the church? I must admit, my own view is that it doesn't seem very adaptable at all always. And I'm pleased that certainly over the last 40 years, increasing financial pressures are now forcing the Church of England particularly to look at what is long overdue, changes. So I think as an opportunity for change is coming, and I welcome it, and I look forward with tentative hope. Let's get to the Gospel passage. After John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism for the repentance of sins, and had been arrested, St. Mark then has Jesus beginning his ministry, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe the good news. Four things. And Jesus' proclamation is a call, a summons to all humanity. The time is fulfilled, the first thing. It's a time for decision. It evokes the belief that God has predetermined all the stages in history and that the final age has begun. It's a time for decision. The kingdom of God has come near or is at hand. The active ruling of God in Jesus is imminent but not yet definitively present. And the words and the deeds of Jesus about to unfold in the rest of Mark's gospel are an enactment of God's rule. Repent suggests a change of heart and mind leading to a new way of life. It's a summons of conversion from evil and a turning towards God. And the fourth thing and believe the gospel. Repentance leads to belief, which involves obedience to the word of God as proclaimed by Jesus and a life of discipleship. Jesus' proclamation is good news from God and about God's intervention in history. The good news is that God is setting about the task of putting straight the evil plight into which the world has fallen, that he is beginning to bring to its fulfilment his original intention at creation. That's the four things that Jesus' proclamation is about. And Mark then illustrates that proclamation with the call of the first disciples. Jesus gathers disciples, or rather, and a more accurate term, I should think, learners. Hence, we get back to education and learning again. Jesus gathers around him learners, those who will hear his word and follow in his footsteps. In other words, a community to believe the gospel. And the call of those first disciples is entirely initiated by Jesus. Teacher calls learners. And that's what we are. The disciples are engaged in everyday activities and they respond to Jesus' summons immediately. 
immediately one of St Mark's favourite words. And when you look at Luke's version and Matthew's version, they use the word immediately at all. So you get the idea that the disciples responded immediately, straight away, no fuss. The call involves personal commitment following or being with Jesus and activity similar to that of Jesus. So Jesus calls each one of us to be his disciples, his learners, as we go about our daily lives. And St Mark gives the impression, perhaps, that Jesus' call came entirely out of the blue. But I think it's highly probable that Jesus had some contact with the disciples beforehand. He had talked with them, no doubt, and they had listened. But what Jesus wanted from them now was not discussion or talk, but a reaction, a response. The time had come for them to answer his call. No more stalling. They reacted immediately when the call came. And vocation, that calling, is not something for just some people. It's for all of us. Jesus has a call for everyone. And we can see, as we've just done, the lay pastoral assistants are called to a valuable ministry. A ministry which is very important because it's very often through people like the lay pastoral assistants that when they come and care for people, that those people are at the beginnings of their journey of faith. In that sense, they're important evangelists as well. Jesus has a call for each one of us. And if we put off following Jesus, it will get harder to do it much later. So there are times when we must be aware of the immediacy of Jesus' call. The first disciples, Simon, Andrew, James and John, were fishermen. And their experience had led them to learn patience, perseverance and courage. That's what you expect of fishermen. Jesus wanted them to use their expertise and their talents in his service. Jesus wants from all of us the gift of ourselves, far more than talk or theory. But will we seek truly to follow him? Jesus calls each of us and we have an opportunity to respond to that call. And Jesus will call us again and again. There is a time when we just have to set out and follow him. Jesus calls us whoever we are. If we reflect for a moment on how we became disciples, we will find that some of us may have responded to Jesus' call almost immediately, while for others it might have taken some time. If I may add a personal note at this point, for eight years I chose not to respond to a call to the ministry. I didn't want to give up teaching. I didn't like the thought of becoming a clergyman. I didn't find it a particularly attractive role. After all, look at Jesus and look at St Paul. They had a hard time. And I'm aware also that one of my personal failings is that I don't relate to institutions very well at all. But despite all my hesitations and all my trying to ignore it, it wouldn't go away. And it was an elderly priest who encouraged me to respond to the call. Yes, I left it. I didn't respond immediately. But there it is. When we look around at the people around us, the people we know, particularly those who are unbelievers, they're faced with several obstacles to the Christian faith today. There is the lure of worldly values, the non-rational nature of belief, very difficult one, 
difficulties in understanding and interpreting the faith, failings in the church's life and witness. They're all obstacles, and there's many more of them to the faith. But like the first disciples, it's necessary to take a step into faith. And we may struggle with faith beforehand, and many of us do. And even if we take the step of faith and experience it, struggles will still continue. I'm still dogged by the things that prevented me all those years ago. They still come up. We will still have doubts. But as disciples, learners, we're to learn from our teacher who walks alongside each of us. So let us all journey with him throughout our lives. Let us follow our calling, learning more and more about Jesus and his message. So we come round to the last question. Will we give ourselves to him and his service? And remember, just like Socrates, the gift of ourselves is most precious to him. The most precious thing you can give Jesus is give him yourself. Let us pray that in each one of us that may indeed be so. Amen. We stand and say together the words of the Creed. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for the start of this new week, for the chance to gather in worship, in prayer, in gratitude, and in love. And we give you thanks for one another. We pray that you would bless the people of St. John's this week, wherever we find ourselves and that through us you would bless the people around us. God, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we give you thanks for the great green earth, for the beauty of your creation. And we hold before you the conversations had this last week at COP26.
We continue to pray that the leaders of the world would hear your vocation calling them along with us to care for your creation. We pray that discussions would result in firm decisions and that decisions at all levels of policy and behaviour would lead to the blessing of the earth. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks again, loving God, for our LPAs here at St John's, for the work and the prayer that they do. We pray for all of those in Broadstone today who have no one to pray for them. We pray for the people who live, who love, who suffer in the quiet places. We pray for people who feel alone. And we pray that your spirit would be with them today. And along with our LPAs, we pray that you would give each of us eyes to see and ears to hear the people around us and willing hands to serve. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we lift before you, especially today, those in any kind of need, in body, mind or spirit. We hold before you everyone on our parish sick list at this time. And in a moment of quiet, we lift before you now the names of people on our own hearts this morning in need of prayer. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray particularly at this time for our schools in this second half term. We pray for all schools where COVID is rife at the moment. Pray for teachers and all staff responsible for making decisions to keep pupils safe. And as pupils return to class bubbles, as assemblies return online, we pray that our school children would indeed feel safe at school. We pray that your spirit would draw close in those corridors and classrooms. And we pray particularly for our schools here in Broadstone and especially Hillbourne, just moved into a new building. Pray that you would bless them as they settle. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And loving God, we give you thanks that you call each of us to eternal life, a life of justice and commitment here on earth, a life of peace and ongoing love beyond. So we pray today especially for Marjorie Sidaway, for the preparations ahead of her funeral, and for all of those who've gone before us, all of those who will come after us. We look forward to that day when we find ourselves reunited in that calling of eternal life. Father, may they rest in peace. And rise in glory. So loving God, with Mary, with John the Baptist and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all of your creation into your loving care, as together we pray. Merciful Father. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the days when war shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that the earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. 
let us offer one another a sign of peace by wait, turning around and waving at one another. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It'll become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always sing of your glory. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. In his face, your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and singing, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. O Christ, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in this holy sacrament, you give substance to our hope. Bring us at the last to that fullness of life for which we long. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I should imagine that there are some notices. And surprisingly there are indeed. Uh, friends, the main notices of course came out in the email yesterday, which hopefully you've all had a chance to see. Uh, but we have one or two to draw your attention to today. So we'll start with next week, uh, hopefully less confusingly. Uh, next week is, of course, Remembrance Sunday. So just to flag up, there will be a Eucharist at 9.30 in the morning here. And then there will be several stages of a Remembrance Act later that morning. So you can join us at 10.45 outside the British Legion, if you'd like to join us for the parade. We will then be at the War Memorial for 11 o'clock, where you can also come to join us if you don't want to walk in the parade. And at 11.30, we will then be back at church for a remembrance service, which I think is not a Eucharist, it's just a remembrance service. That's next week. Coming back to today, at the back of church, and I think in the, the church hall afterwards, there are still a raft of clipboards with opportunities to help out over the coming weeks uh, for Christmas. So if you could have a look, and if you fancy baking cakes or mince pies or helping to set up or take down the Christmas fair, please do pop your names on those lists. Uh, many hands making light work. It's lovely that these things are happening this year. Uh, and then just... I think, I think that's all of our notices. And Don's got a hand up. So St. John's Fellowship is this Thursday. And is that at 7.30 does that start? 7.45 start. Lovely. And is it you indeed speaking this week? Don is our esteemed speaker this week at the Fellowship on Thursday night in the parish hall. With that, I think that is everything. Christ the King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Amen.